Good morning and thanks for coming. Let's go further and see what types of patients we have to present to you. More exciting video. A day in the life of Emily and Celine. These are the learning objectives for this talk. Class four and five. The notion of complex alleles. Describe compound heterozygosity for f 5 r 117H and how that can be associated with or without symptoms. Glasses on, excitement. My name is Emily and I, I, and I am 11 years old. My name is Celine and I am 12 years old and we live all in Vosselaar op Vispel 41. Ik vind het zo leuk aan een boerderij. Dan kun je veel buiten spelen. Als er een diertje wordt geboren. Ik vind dat heel tof. Want er komt een diertje te leven. En dan kun je er beginnen voor te zorgen. De dokter heeft dus gezegd dat er zes vormen van muco zijn. En zes deuren. En de vierde deur, dat waren wij. De, die deur was te smal. Wij kunnen wel ademen, maar wij, wij hebben het moeilijker om te ademen, to, want onze deur is smaller. Als met de tunnel is, als je dan moet lopen, dan word je rapper moe. Want dan krijg je niet genoeg adem. Uh, dan, kan ik, dan kun je niet te goed ademen. Moet je naar Leuven voor een controle te doen voor hoe gezond uw longen zijn? Kom maar mee, meisjes. Voilà. Hier is onze meester Trudy. Trudy, leuk, want die vraagt altijd vragen en zo. Wat dat je nog doet van hobby's en zo. Wat je beste vriendin is en wat dat je graag doet. En ik vind dat eigenlijk wel leuk. Dus je kunt die daar alles tegen vertellen. Hè. We hebben ook heel veel kalfjes die heel veel, allee, heel veel melk drinken en dat duurt wel lang eer dat ze allemaal melk hebben gehad. Dan geven ze stro en hooi en geven ze drinken. Ik wil graag dierenarts worden. Ik ben graag bij de dieren en ik verzorg ze ook graag. Ik zou graag ja, een bedrijf overnemen, ook omdat ik wil graag met de dieren omgaan. En ja, het is gewoon leuk. Maar Emily is eigenlijk zo meer de wilde bras in huis. Die, allee, die kan niet blijven stilzitten. Soms kan hij wel goed met mij omgaan en een andere keer dan weer niet. Als ik het zo mag zeggen. Fantastic young ladies. Here we have again our cartoon, class 4 mutations. The protein is made. It is inserted in the membrane, but it has decreased conductance. Less than normal ions travel to the channel. R117H by itself does not decrease conductance a lot. So patients usually don't have symptoms unless there's also 5T and R117H 5T decreases the amount of CFTR protein at the membrane but because there's still some function, symptoms are usually mild. Class 5, complex. Splice variants in the mRNA, the ribosome again, the normal mRNA is translated to a functional protein. The abnormal mRNA, no protein. The net result is normal, but a smaller amount of CFTR at the cell membrane. Again, since there is some, there's usually mild symptoms. Here we have either captor again. It might be of use for class 4 and 5, an increased chloride transport because there is residual chloride transport. So, 
we can take off our glasses and go to the first slide. This slide shows you data from the European Registry and if I find the pointer, it shows you the combination of mutations in these 22,000 patients. What do you have on their one chromosome? What do you have on their other? It's pretty obvious that the combination two class two is by far most common. And in green, you see all the patients that have at least one class four or five, and that amounts to about 6% in European registry. On average, these patients have a milder disease score. They're sometimes also called low-risk genotype or mild CFTR genotype. And from data in the American registry, it's pretty obviously obvious that if you look cross-sectionally at the two groups, on average, these patients with a mild genotype are older. Despite this older age, they have similar to slightly better lung function. They have a much lower chance of having pancreatic insufficiency. And despite the much older age, there's less pseudomonas colonization. Also, very importantly, their median age of death is a lot higher than patients with a high risk genotype. But look at the great variability. So having a low risk genotype is not a guarantee that you'll do well. Very important to keep in mind. You know this cartoon already, so it's easy to understand why class four and five would lead to, on average, milder disease because Class 4 has reduced but not absent conductance. And class 5 leads to reduced but not absent amount of protein on the membrane. Now the special case of R17H mm -hmm. and the idea of complex alleles. What is this? What it really means is that there's a second change in the same gene, and that influences how much disease expression there is. So in cis means on the same allele, and the T repeats further on the same allele as R17H determine the phenotype. There's three possible variants, T5, T7, T9. So in the situation where R17H is already there as mutation, and you have further on the same allele 5T, it will lead to pancreatic sufficient non-classic CF. If, on the other hand, there would be a 70 further on the same allele, then this would usually not be associated with disease. How come? Well, the T variance, the polypyrimidine tract, influences whether exon 9 will be included in the transcript or not. The good variants, 17-19, about all mRNA that is produced contains exon 9. The bad variant, 5T, only about 10% contains exon 9. What else do we know about r 178 Well, if you look at registries, and here again, European Patient Registry, r 178 only accounts for about 1% of all alleles of CF patients. If on the other hand, 1%, if on the other hand, you look in newborn screening programs, well then, surprisingly, up to 10% of the patients that are detected will have R117H. The French were the first to alert us to that and to also show that most of these patients remain asymptomatic, no symptoms. And then the same was seen in other registries for instance, here, um, Canadian data, but there's also uh, American, Californian data. Now we all find that we found a surplus of R17H patients in the registries. Important to know is that R17H makes up quite a big proportion of all subjects with class 4. And you see here US, Europe, Australia, Canadian data. Most of the patients are of class 4 are R17H. <coughs> also across Europe, but there again, marked differences. Some countries, like Ireland, it's still the all 
R on 7H. And we also know that many of these are 5T. It's also a bad rule in Belgium, but we know that nearly all of them are 7T. And in some countries, there's really other mutations, like Germany, that make up most of class 4. What drugs are in the pipeline for subjects with class 4, 5 mutation? Peter has already shown you that Ivacaftor also potentiates wild type CFTR. So the question is, will Ivacaftor improve people with class 4 mutations? We will have the answer from the ongoing R17H trial. A crossover phase 3, 24 weeks of Ivacaftor, 150 mg BIV, or placebo. Primary outcome parameter will be FEV1% predicted change. So we'll have the answer. Will Ivacaftor improve people with class 5 mutations? Well, there is a good reason to think so because at least in vitro, and you again see on the next slide the same presentation as, but other mutations as Peter has shown you. So baseline, normal, wild type function is reduced in many of these rare mutations of either class four, class five, like the Dutch mutation, A455E, or unknown protein defect. But the good news is that, look at the blue bars, when you add Ivacaftor, there's really a big boost in how chloride transport improves. So there's a good chance that also patients with these types of mutations would get benefit from a potentiator. Conclusion, class four or five mutations in a minority of subjects with CF. On average, they have a milder CF disease phenotype and they're pancreatic sufficient. We hope that a potentiator will bring clinical benefit for them. We've discussed the special case of R117H, an example of a complex allele where really the T tract on the same, pro on the same allele will determine whether the patient will have very mild or even no disease. We have to keep in mind that these will be found in excess since we have newborn screening and we thus should know the T status and know how to counsel these patients. And it's only if you are unlucky and have a double hit on 17 h and then a 5T that you have a higher risk of disease. Acknowledgements, of course, all these people who work in registries, but not especially today and in the least, also our patients, my fantastic team, and also the team who put these wonderful videos together. I think it's really a treat and it will also be a treat to our patients to see them in, uh, th themselves in uh, 3D. Thank you very much.